All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be an unboxing. And this is one that I'm really excited about because it is going to be a couple cold steel knives from Midway USA, as you can see there. And um, in particular, one of them is going to be a brother to this knife. This knife was uh, loaned by Dan, my friend Dan, who has loaned a lot of knives to the channel, just as kind of a um, comparison to the one I got here. And uh, the Voyager is a knife that I carried and used for a long time, specifically a Voyager XL, but a long time ago, and I wanted to get one. Um, they went up in price pretty considerably. I, I remember when I used to have one, you, you were able to get them for like, I think 35 or $40, maybe 45 in the 35 to $45 range. And they went up to actually, I think like 90 originally, something like that. Um, now, Dan said that he got his from Amazon for $70, which is, I think, a good price, a little lower than normal and where they kind of, you know, fit in. But um, Midway USA had specifically the version that I wanted to try, which was the, now, uh, as always here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell so you get notifications, check out my website, knifethoughts.com, and my social media at Knife Thoughts. But the version that, that was the newer version, which was the drop point, um, was on sale for like $47 in some sense. So much less than normal, at least recently. And I'm using my axial shift here, um, a, a budget friendly relative to other USA made out the front knives. I really enjoy this one but using it to open this here um they had the, this drop point on sale for like 48 dollars, and i couldn't pass it up i wanted to try the drop point anyway now they had free shipping at 49 dollars, so of course i had to buy another knife and i'm guessing that that's why they made it 47 dollars instead of you know 49 dollars or 50 dollars, so that you would have to buy an extra knife or or something to get the free shipping but these are the knives I'm opening. The Kudu Light, I actually have had one before and gave it to Dan a while back, I believe. Uh, he used it to practice sharpening. So I'm going to open this. Got it because it's about $7, maybe $8, $7.50, something like that on Midway. Uh, it's a slip joint version of the Kudu, which I have and have used a lot of Kudu for gardening and stuff. Actually, my wife used it a lot over the last couple of years for gardening. But this is a very big slip joint. It's based on a traditional South African knife, um, the which are still made, uh, you know, in South Africa. I don't think that this is, uh, doesn't immediately say on it where it's made. You can see that it's the number 20 KJ Kudu Light, uh, new logo. Cold Steel was bought by GSM Outdoors. Um, but this is a big, big knife. Now, I have had some people tell me that these have issues where the spring breaks. This spring is kind of cool. It's outside the, the frame of the handle. It is pinned, as you can see. Um, actually riveted, I would say. But then the pivot is a screw pivot, so you could adjust the pivot if necessary. One difference between this and the Kudu is the Kudu has the kind of ratchet um, pivot which is traditional with the ring lock. This is just a slip joint. And like I said, people have said that the spring is broken. Um, honestly, if the spring breaks on this after I carry and use it a few times, not a huge, huge deal because it is so inexpensive at under $8. Um, this one seems to be not perfect, but centered well enough that it's not, you know, rubbing on the sides of the handle in the blade well. And even if it did, there's no liner, so it's not going to scratch it. Uh, the blade might be a little bit bent. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, it's bent towards this side, I believe. A little bit. Um, any blade play here? No, no blade play. Pretty solid, actually. And it's a pretty classic knife, too. It's uh, similar to, like, a Navaja, the traditional Spanish pattern. And a lot of other knives. The clip point is a very, very old and traditional blade shape. And this handle just makes sense with a clip point, you know, so that the the tip sits within the frame. That's why, you know, the Navaja and other traditional patterns have this upturned tip so that this 
or upturned butt so that the tip sits in, within the, the butt of the handle. I'm happy with it for eight bucks. I think it's it's a fine knife. It has five CR15 steel, MOV steel, which is not great at all, but it's eight bucks. Uh, I have used this. My wife has used the Kudu, not the light. The Kudu, like I said, has a gardening knife, and I think it's good for that. Where you're not worrying about it, you're just using it and, you know, don't want to worry about it rusting too much or being tr tough to sharpen. I think this is a good option. So I'm happy with it. Made in China, it says there on the blade. Now that I take a closer look. Um, and we can move on to the main event here. The Voyager Extra Large Drop Point. There is the Tonto. Like I said, I've used the Tonto in the past. These have a little bit of a different stone wash than I recall. But it's a really classic knife. Uh, very big. It has a five and a inch, five and a half inch blade, and then Aus 10A steel. Some people complain about the Aus 10 on cold steel knives. I don't. I like it. Cold steel did a great job of their Aus 8, which is what this the Voyager XL that I had was in. Uh, held an edge well. No issues with it really. I, I was a fan of it easy to sharpen, not a super steel, but I don't care about that too, too much. And this is a new blade shape, uh, new stone wash, like I said, but let's take a look at it. Blade mil uh, thickness is four millimeters, has that Griv X, which is basically nylon handle, but the Aus 10A, like I say, I like it. Good budget steel. I have used it a lot on the, there's the shift again, on the by the way, I'll have a link in the description where you can grab one of these if you'd like. They have had some really good sales recently. And like I say, they're all 100% made and assembled in the USA. OEM manufacturers for the parts. Uh, I like it. Uh, anyway, uh, the on the Cold Steel 4 Max Scout, which has OS 10A, I have used it a lot and been impressed with it. It holds an edge well enough for me. And is relatively easy to sharpen even on a really big knife. So you can see they give you an extra clip. And the reason for that is because while there are holes on both sides, so you could make switch this over and Dan is left-handed. He must have just gotten this when he loaned it to me because he usually switches those clips over. But you can see, you know, it wouldn't fit with the handle on the other side. So that's why they give you an actual extra clip rather than just making it flippable. And here is the knife. Right away, I like the look of this drop point within the handle. Looks pretty good. Uh, let's see the centering. Again, pretty good. I would say close to perfect, actually. Maybe not 100%, maybe ever so slightly towards the non-clip side or the show side, but to me, that's, that's close enough to perfect. In, one interesting thing I saw someone mention online recently is that this drop point has jimping on the top of the blade, whereas mm -hmm the Tonto doesn't, and I don't think that the clip point does either. I like that the tip, it's not 100% perfectly centered, but it doesn't bother me at all. I like that the tip sits relatively deeply within the frame. That's one thing. The Tonto, it, it's not close to proud, but it, it comes up there. You can see that. Um, whereas the, the drop point sits mm, at least a quarter of an inch down within the handle there any issues i don't really see anything you know the there's some lines from the molding but it's uh you know nylon handle budget friendly knife particularly at 48 dollars. i wish that i had told dan about the fact that you know it was for on sale for that much i feel kind of bad about it but you know there weren't too too many of them i saw it posted on reddit it's a great place to find knife deals by the way not everybody likes reddit there's a lot of negative things about reddit too but there's a subreddit called our knife deals and then our blades in stock both of those are pretty good resources particularly for modern knives uh, to get good deals on them and find them when they're in stock so i saw it posted there and by the time i bought mine which was either that day maybe the next day but pretty quickly afterwards i think there were only eight in stock so there weren't a whole whole lot of them but one thing some people don't like, which is the case on both, is the, the, the 
spine sits above the handle. I don't care about that at all. Just thought I'd mention it. These are thumb stud. Now, one thing to mention, if you're familiar with, what are they called now? Snaggletooth MF. Uh, they sent me a couple of their, their add-ons that work on cold steel knives. I don't know. I believe that, that they have one that works on the X, Voyager XL. I don't know that the one I have does. I, I might try it out because uh, it makes it a wave opening knife. But anyway, let's take a look. Super smooth. Um, that's why if you saw my recent unboxing of some cold steels, I was really surprised that they weren't as smooth as normal. Cold steel generally does a good job. Uh, so I love this blade shape. I got to tell you, that is a nice, it's really, it is a drop point, but it's close to a spear point. It, it almost looks like a leaf shape, I guess I would say. But wow, that, that looks good. I, I'm a fan of that. I hope there's no blade play. That's one of the things... I think both the um, Raja 2 and the 8010 that I got from Amazon had blade play, but definitely the 8010 had bad blade play. There's none forward and back at all. No side to side when locked. Let's see about when unlocked. Not at all. Super, super solid. Now let's see how it closes. It's hard to show this on my setup. I, I still am working on figuring out my setup here where I'm, I'm living now, but can't really show the closing of such a big five and a half inch knife very well here, but let's see how, how it does. Super smooth, super, super smooth. Oh man, I'm happy with this purchase, guys. I know I've had some negative uh, guys and girls and, and everybody else. Um, I use that as a, a neutral term. People who watch knife videos. Uh, I'm happy with this one, people who watch this knife video. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's really nice to have that feeling. You know, I have had some, some unboxings recent, recently that were not that positive, and I always kind of hate to do that because you want it to be really exciting, but I also want to be honest. And so I want to make sure I, I express my excitement when I get one that I'm happy with because I am happy with this for $48. Wow, what a ridiculous, fun, huge, silly but also maybe practical knife. You could use this for a whole lot of tasks. This would be a great kitchen knife, I think, and I will use it. I'm gonna put it right in my pocket. And uh, kitchen knife, outdoor knife. I mean, it even looks pretty slicey. I'll show you that grind. I mean, that's not bad, right? That's not bad at all. Another thing that I didn't like on the Raja 2 is it seems like on the Raja 2, they just keep making this unsharpened area here longer and longer. This one has what a lot of people really love. I don't care too much about having it or not, but a sharpening soil. Uh, what I do care about is that the edge goes all the way at, either to the sharpening soil or to the ricasa or the grind line or plunge line. Uh, and this does, it goes all the way to that sharpening soil, as you can see there. So I'm really happy with that. Let's feel the edge. There is a slight change of color right here. Um, not sure what the deal is with that. Not sure if you can, yeah, you can see it there. Probably just a sharpening thing, but no, no edge damage that I can feel. It doesn't, you know, it shouldn't be hitting the, the back, but doesn't feel like it is. feels pretty sharp too. Not the smoothest edge I've ever felt, but pretty sharp and looks relatively well ground. I'd say, I mean, I'm sure someone will say, oh, it looks terrible, but to me for 48 bucks and honestly even for 70 bucks you know this is a heck of a knife for 70 bucks one thing i don't know if my hand has gotten smaller that would be strange but i don't recall this area being quite as wide when i had one before uh, so when you grip it here the pinky can go into this area index finger here and if you grip it down a little farther it's completely fine for me it's uh you know i'm getting very poor supination in my wrists from years of wrestling and jiu-jitsu, but uh, it does feel pretty good when you're choked down. Uh, if you're way up here, you can also, all I can almost get my pinky, all three fingers into this area, but not quite. One thing though, is you can choke down. I used to use this to, to clear trees and stuff uh, when I was working outdoors, and you can 
choke all the way down to having your, your index and middle finger on this. And it's a little bit of a loose grip, a little bit of a, a risky grip, but you can do it. And it definitely, you know, will make it safer if you put a lanyard here. On a knife this big, I probably will put a lanyard too, just for the heck of it. Uh, I got some uh, paracord from Paracord Planet recently. Uh, funny colors, one of them's called Country Girl. It's like pink camo, basically. But anyway, I'll put some of that on there. I don't know. I'm kind of ranting just because I'm so excited about this, to be honest. I'm I'm happy with this one. I'm looking forward to putting it to use. Uh, now, one thing with these that I wanted to mention is when you buy one of these, if you're going to carry it, you're pretty much going to have to sand down the area under this clip. Now, the reason for that is because this texture on this Grivex or whatever they call it, Grivery, which is basically nylon like a Spyderco, you know, FRN or whatever, is super aggressive. I mean, like really, really aggressive. And it's made up of these crosses of triangle type shapes, pyramid, kind of isosceles pyramids type things. And it is very, very grippy and very, very aggressive. And I like it for that. Uh, I've been meaning for literally like two years or at least a year to write an article about why I like injection molded plastic handles. And, and this is a great example. You can get really good texture that honestly, in my opinion, looks good also, you know, in an inexpensive knife or less expensive than if it was G10 or something else. But you can see that both have that. You will have to sand underneath that clip in my opinion what i do is i take and maybe i'm you know do a full review of this and you know show how, how you can do it but you take a, a a piece of sandpaper and i just put it underneath that clip and run it back and forth for a little bit until it smooths out enough that you can you know slide it in and out of your pocket pretty easily i've also seen people fill in the area around the clip with i don't know epoxy something like that but to me, it's easier just to sand it down. So honestly, really happy with this. Happy with both of them. Here is the Kudu light again. But particularly happy with the Voyager XL in drop point. I think that I think that they're out of stock at Midway as of filming this at that price. But at that price, great deal. I mean, I am one of my favorite deals. I've gotten in a long time on a knife. 48 bucks, 55 or something shipped with both of these. Can't beat it. Two big, silly, fun, enjoyable, useful, and just knives that I'm happy to have. So uh, a really positive unboxing here, which is always nice. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Also, uh, subscribe to the channel and click the bell because I have more coming up. I'd like to hear your thoughts uh, those of you who have listened or watched to this point on the fact that I've been doing a lot of unboxings on my knives. I've kind of had a mix of unboxings of the knives that I've been getting and kind of like overviews of the knives that people have loaned me. And I do have full reviews coming. I've got full reviews of Asher knives. Uh, I've got them right here that I've been carrying and using and getting a really good feel for. I will have full reviews of other knives. But I've just been getting some knives that I haven't gotten a chance to really, you know, put through their paces yet. And I wanted to, to make sure that, that, those are, that these unboxings are not getting boring. So I do think that unboxings are valuable because you get a first, a true first impression. I mean, I open the box, open the package, you see what they're like. There's no fiddling about it or anything. You know, they're, they're, it's real. It's raw, as they say, um, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. So uh, as always, thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it and don't forget to go out and do good.